when your ASP.NET Core application crashes on startup, diagnosing that in production can be really difficult. Well, let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, uh, Dave is going to remove one of my primary reasons for contributing to a swear jar startup errors in ASP.NET applications deployed to app services. Tell me yeah. everything. It is costing me a fortune to finance this swear jar. I believe it. Uh, so as often is the case with our little episodes here, uh, this is a scenario that came up for me last week in my day job. Uh, I had this I have this scenario where there's a setting called encryption enabled that I want to make sure in any version of my application that's deployed, I want to make sure that that is set to true. It's just a simple app setting, true, false. Uh, but I don't necessarily want all of my developers on my team to have to enable this co fairly complex encryption mechanism on their local for local development. So when we're developing locally, I'm totally fine if that's turned off, but I want to make sure that like, if something de somebody deploys this and doesn't set it to true, I just want it to crash. Like I don't even want the application to start up. But of course, I went and deployed that and then couldn't figure out why is my application not starting up because it just was crashing on startup, wouldn't even get to the point of accepting any HTTP requests. So uh, here's my little sample web application 30. Uh, and I have this app setting called encryption enabled, which is currently set to false. And in my configure method in startup.cs, I'm just saying if this is not deployment, not development, and uh, if that setting is false, then throw this uh, throw this exception and just like, don't even start up. So this runs fine locally. Compiling, running, and I get to my main page. All is happy and fine in development land. Uh, but then I go to deploy this to Azure. So I do a publish here. Which I'm just publishing with with right with right click publish for demonstration purposes. Um, let's see here. It's deploying you know, the app. We always put that warning in there because we don't want people <laughs> to be upset at us. But I, honestly, I don't think he cares for this. <laughs> I mean, right click, click publish, one of the main reasons it's around is for demos, right? Yeah. Okay, so this gets deployed and I get this dreaded error that we've all seen way too often. Error 500.30 ANCM in process startup failure. And then you're just like, I have no idea how to debug this and figure out think... what's going on. ANCM is like the sound that people make when they see this error, like, ah! <laughs> I can't think what else it would be, Simon. So they have these troubleshooting tips. Uh, check the system event log, enable logging to STD output. This has kind of been like the way that I've done this in the past is try to go in there and uh, enable logging to STD out, which is part of like the web config settings for the ASP.NET Core process. Uh, but I noticed, so I'm flipping over to the Azure portal here and going into this web application 30 that I just deployed. And I, I kind of found this by accident. I went into Diagnose and Solve, which is the App Service Diagnostics tool. And this is in preview, so like things kind of seem to change often and maybe don't always work perfectly, but it can be really helpful at times. So originally I thought, well, maybe I come into Availability and Performance and my web app's down, so I'll probably click there. Oh, now it is coming through. So we have some failed requests. I can click on that and see what they say. And I'll see if I can get to it this direction. I'm going to show you two ways to get to this data. Uh, so this is one of them here. It's showing me that there's some failures. And then, yeah, this is one I saw the other day. So this is kind of neat. Like It actually detects this 530 error. And I can click on more info for it. And what did it do for me here? It gives me some more pretty graphs. And yeah, it tells me here's a .NET Core startup failure. And I can view the .NET Core startup failure. It's a bit of a roundabout way of getting there. But now it actually shows me the system.exception. And I think 
if I click on it, yeah, I see my exception. So there it says encryption must be enabled in on non-development environments. So that's scenario one for how to get there. The caveat there is that this doesn't always seem to show up or there's there can be quite a lag sometimes for it to show up. Uh, so you might not find it here right away when you're first trying to investigate the error. This might actually be from when I was when I deployed it earlier and was testing. So there's a bit of a delay there that makes this maybe less than ideal. The other way that you can get to it though is if you go down to the other place I was looking at was diagnostics tools in here. And I went over to scroll down, application event logs. And here I found it right away. So here's the one from when I was testing this earlier and then the one from when I just did the deploy now. So I can actually click on these and see exactly the error. So again, encryption must be enabled for all non-development environments. So there's two easy-ish ways to, to get to this information now if you run into that dreaded <laughs> yeah, error, whatever it was. Uh, and now that I know, I should be able to come in here and very, very easily change my app setting and have everything work magically. So what did I call that setting? Encryption enabled, I believe. Yeah, something like that. Save. And that should get us past this 500.30. <gasps> it, it didn't. It might just be or did it. to restart. There we go. Magic. Fabulous. Boy, I'm so happy to have that. Now Meet. I just need like that same thing for classic ASP and BC apps as well. I wonder if it works. It might just work for those two. Hmm. Well, we can experiment. Maybe yeah. do another episode on it if people are interested. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited by this. And you should absolutely send like a smiley face feedback. For <laughs> All right. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today on another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and share. And uh, if you have any problems commenting, maybe check your exception logs. <laughs> and we'll see everybody next week. Bye.